a couple hours. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, so I'm just posting a remake in a few different spots that I like to post it in um, before getting started. And there's just one more I got to post it in. So this is, that's good. Um, I'll post it here. Um, okay, post it there. That's nice. I'll close that. I'll put this in here. Oh, and I, I also want to post on Product Hunt too. Dot com slash makers. Okay, I'll just make sure that I can hear myself, which I cannot. Uh, what is going on here? Oh, I muted, I muted Twitch. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, and I'm going to just create this goal. Oh, shit. Okay, post that. Uh, let's make sure I didn't do the same thing and get maker log. Oh, yeah, I want to I wanna edit this or delete it. Okay, there we go. Edit. Okay, delete it, sure. Okay. So I'll post that. Okay, so now we can get started. Um, I'm gonna close out of this document. Okay, so let's see. We don't have anyone here yet, but that's okay. Um, so basically I have um, this really cool code example on Remix homepage. Um, well, let me go to the actual website. So in Remix homepage right now, um, I have this code example, but it's not exactly sure, it's not, sorry, it's not exactly um, <laughs> clear what it's doing. Um, like you have all these data attributes and stuff, but you kind of have to figure it out yourself. So I was thinking it'd be cool if there was like a little tutorial. Um, so maybe it says like, show a tutorial or uh, start tour, figure out if like find out how we make works. So let's go to the source. We're going to go to to do tour. So this is what we decided on start tour and see how remake works. Uh, step by step. See how this app works. See how this web app works. Um, explore. No, see. See how this web app works. Okay. And then I have a design here of all the different steps. Um, and I want to add the button under here. So I think I'm going to make a similar button to like what's up there. No, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to align it to the left here. And then, hey, uh, A1J9094, uh, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Let me know if you're uh, interested in learning about anything in particular. Um, but if you're just here to watch, that's fine too. Um, okay, so, hey, how's it going? Are you a, are you a coder? Are you new to um, web development? Are you pretty experienced? What's your, what's your interest? We'll have start tour. Oh, awesome. 
Um, <laughs> that's really cool. Actually, I was thinking about posting it again today. Um, but I, yeah, but I hesitated because my other post was still visible. But that's cool that you still uh, came to check it out. Okay, so you moderately experienced you used to be a coder. That's, um, that's cool. So um, what line of work are you in now? And, oh, CS minor, nice. Are you looking to get back into coding? Um, are you... Uh, Fusis says you've got a glitch sort of style going on. Um, where's, where's the glitch? <laughs> are you saying that the design, the design is, I'm not sure exactly what the glitch style is. Glitch. I'm not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> oh, you're working corporate strategy for a software company now. Um, that's pretty cool. Corporate strategy. So is that like acquisitions or is that like product strategy or... Oh, oh, okay, awesome. I'm glad you feel that way. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love, I love Glitch. I think they're one of my. I'm so glad you said that. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't think that about my website, but um, I guess it, you know, it's kind of, yeah, it's a little playful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really admire Glitch a lot. Um, they're a really cool company. It's cool that they finally came up with a paid product because I was a little getting a little bit worried about them, uh, like actually <laughs> surviving. Um, okay, so I'll have this like start tour button. I guess we're gonna make it. Hmm, I'm not sure how to make it seem related to this. It's like special projects, anything that the executive team needs help with. Okay, special projects. Oh, nice. You have your own startup. That's pretty cool. Um, that's exciting. Uh, what is, um, not that the idea like is the be all and end all, but like what, what's your idea? Um, I'm curious. Okay. Yeah. I think we'll make it that color and I think we'll make it light on the top. Okay, nice. So you have uh, experience in um, mergers and acquisitions. I think actually, <laughs> I think I only recently like uh, really made sure I knew what that meant. <laughs> M&A. Um, I mean, like, I think I, I kind of knew what it meant, but like, I was like, not sure. And then I like read it in a book recently and I was like, oh, of course, mergers and acquisitions. But I think before that, I was like, oh, yeah, it's like something to do with business. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm making myself sound a little dumb. Um, but no, that's awesome. Mergers and acquisitions. Um, it's an e-learning platform to help people learn how to do analysis in, a, in Excel with an in-browser Excel emulator like Code Academy, but for Excel. Okay, that's cool. Um, I feel like, do I see something like this recently? You didn't like post this on MakerLog or somewhere, some like uh, MakerLog or Product Hunt Makers or, no, okay. Um, that sounds really cool though, okay. Oh, you know what I saw? Okay, sorry. This is what I saw. I saw something that lets you do, uh, sorry, SQL operations using an Excel-like interface. So like you're, you have like Excel tables that represent your, your database, and then it lets you like use drop-down menus to like do joins and stuff like that. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, there's a lot of stuff like that coming out recently, but that's cool, e-learning. Um, and for analysis, that's actually, I think, super useful because I think a lot of uh, businesses um, don't know even how to like just keep track of their revenue, never mind like actually do analysis on, on it or on users, stuff like that. Um, that seems pretty useful. 
Um, not sure exactly about this button. I think I, I think I want to make it black. I think I want to make it square <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why I want to make it square. So let's just try it. And then I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm going to give it like a shadow. So let's just give it a shadow. I'm going to just play around with it just for a second. Um, of course, I'm like close to actually like releasing this uh, tour for the website. So now I'm, I guess, procrastinating a little bit. Um, but let's, yeah, let's uh, maybe get this yellow. That's not too bad. I actually, I kind of like that. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the great thing about startups in general is you can always improve it later. Um, <laughs> well, I like <laughs> perfectly align this. Uh, it's kind of a waste of time. Um, okay, so we'll do, um, yeah, I guess I am a little curious, like what kind of analysis it is. Are you helping them do like, um, like analyze their business metrics or is it like user behavior? Um, cause I might know someone who, like I might come across someone who might be interested in that space and then. I could, I don't know, put them in touch with you if, if, the, if you're working on something that they need. Just start, okay, focus on financial analysis. Okay, so like if I'm running a company, basically, um, and uh, I need help like making a burn down chart uh, to see like when I'm gonna run out of money and how much money I have to make by next quarter, and how many sales I have to do, that's the kind of thing um, that you're doing. Four, four. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's really cool. I think you might even want to um, think a little bit more niche than that because I do think there are a few um, startups that do that. But if I come across anyone who needs that, or, you know, if I start making money <laughs> myself at some point, um, I'll definitely check that out. Do you have a website for it? Oh, nice. Yeah, that would actually be useful just for me because, like, I'm, like, really pretty fond of the creative side of the business, but, like, um, not as good with the keeping track of all the financial stuff. Master financial modeling. Financial model. Huh. Okay, nice. For some reason, when you said three statement, I thought it was like three... Um, three variable. I don't know. I, I know that's not like <laughs> what that even means in the financial space, but I'm just not very familiar with that. Um, that space. Oh, that's cool. Um, but no, I, I get it now because I, I, I've done like a little investing and I totally know, you know, you need to know <laughs> about the income statement, balance, you know, balance sheet, cash flow. I actually, you know what I did think? I thought that like this, can't this all be in like one statement? Income, balance, and cash flow. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe that's not true. But yeah, that's very cool. License revenue, total revenue. And then does it help you? Oh, it is, okay, it is all in one sheet. Okay, got it, okay. Wait, okay, so, oh. Okay, got it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm your target market because like right away I misunderstood this. I was like, three statement financial model. Okay, so it's gonna be simple on one sheet. And then I, and then I saw this next, uh, or this one here, and I was like, oh, they're three separate things. And then you had to explain to me that they were all just one thing. Um, no, but that's cool. That's cool too. Um, I guess... Uh, 
even though finance people might know this, you might want to um, put the benefit up here. Because like this is cool that you're like, you're telling them exactly what they're going to get out of it. But like a lot of the time you want somewhere up at this top area to be like the main benefit. So like if I have this income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement, like I know running a business that that's probably incredibly valuable. But unless you tell me exactly why it's valuable, I'm not going to know uh, exactly. Like I'm not going to feel like clicking start learning now. Right. But if you tell me like right here, like if you have these details, you're going to be able to plan ahead, you know, three years in advance or, or even like two quarters in advance. That's a little bit more compelling to me. Or like if it's like you're going to be able to. I don't know. Spend more money on the things that matter to your business. Um, that's also interesting to me. Um, so I don't know. Those that might be obvious to finance people, but even if it's obvious to your target market, I think you want to just make it clear that you understand, you know, and and actually and like tell them that that's what your product helps them do. Uh, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah, because some some of these types of things they help you like project into the future, and some of them are just like to keep track of finances. Um, and something that you could do, um, yeah, you're gonna put some thought into the focus, yeah. Because if you're targeting, the benefits are different than for a business owner. Yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely. That's definitely true. Definitely true. Um, uh, something that you might want to think about, this is this type of business is actually the perfect opportunity for doing, um, they call it side project marketing. So like there's content marketing, there's paid advertising, um, but there's side project marketing, which is releasing like a finished product for free that might just take you a day or two to put together, but you release it for free in the, to the whole community. And then at the bottom, you say something like brought to you by model master, modelmaster.io for, you know, to learn more about financial modeling. And then, so like you release a spreadsheet that's like, I don't know how to calculate, I don't know, your, <laughs> your taxes or something, you know, I don't know, like it could be whatever, something, you know, how to do very easily. And then you release it for free and ideally it's of high enough value that people will want to use it. And then that free product will spread. Um, and it might take, you know, a few of those free products to like actually, you know, find something that's viral. But if you make it valuable enough, um, and especially if you have, you know, the knowledge about the industry to make something really valuable, um, that's going to spread for free. And then that helps get the word out. Um, and also let people know that you care about quality, right? Because if the spreadsheet or the tool is really high quality, then they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll have less doubt about signing up for this startup because I already know they're a high quality uh, thing. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, that seems like a really, a really good idea. Okay, let's decrease the width here. One, two, three, four. The height and bring that, tighten that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, just some ideas. Um, I always like just kind of like looking at what other people are working on and uh, and just like I don't know, talking about it. It's always fun to just like see um, see what people are working on and uh, yeah. It seems like a really good idea. I think you do need to think about your market a little bit too. I mean, I think every company pretty much has to do that. Okay, so start tour. You know, I think this should have, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've like um, resorted to paying people to like give remake a look and like, and see what they think of it. Um, so I think this needs a triangle in it to like make it 
seem like it's an action thing. So right there, we'll make this yellow. We'll rotate it. And we'll bring that in there. Um, we'll decrease the weight a little bit. Is it easy to set up a simple demo? You're willing to spend some time taking a look? Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, maybe we can... Um, um, I can't today, because I'm streaming and then I'm, I'm pretty much done with work. Um, but I could, like next week, if you want to just like email me at David, or I can email you, but you can just email me at david at remaketheweb.com uh, and we can set something up for next week. Um, and I can also like give you feedback on your product if, if it would help. Um, I would totally be up for that. Um, not sure about this triangle. Now, I no longer like this triangle. I think I liked it before when it was just like this. And let's just go with that for now because it's it's good enough. Um, and then I guess this, this could just be like, see how this works. And do we want to center this? Oops. Hmm, no, I think it should be on the code side. And I guess, yeah, we can do this. See how this, see how it, see how it works. Colon, start tour. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know. The yellow is a little weird. Well, the thing I'm worried about is that the tour is going to be only over here. I guess, yeah. Maybe it's a good idea. Um, okay. Let's try centering it. Oops. <laughs> Let's try centering it. Okay. Oh, thanks for following. Really appreciate it. Um, that's awesome. See how it works. Start tour. Um, okay. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I don't actually. I don't like the yellow anymore. I don't know why. Let's see. I guess. Um, uh. Yeah, it's a little too blocky. I think what I would rather have maybe is that. Um, and let's get rid of the yellow. And let's round it. Totally rounded? Yeah, I think it's not bad. And let's maybe um, bring it in a little bit. Like that. I just want to try it. Or something like that. Hmm. Not sure. I might be ruining it. Um, but I can always undo. Yeah, I, that, I don't know. That feels maybe a little bit better to me. I could also add the button. No. I think it's good down here. Hmm. Okay, so let's see. Let's um, let's uh, actually copy this, and then we'll just undo. You like the other one better? Yeah, I kind of did too. And I'm just worried that it's a little busy with the yellow. I guess it's kind of okay though. Okay, yeah, we'll just go with that. Um, I don't have to keep it permanently, but. I think this is fine for now. Okay, so, um, yeah. 
It is a little weird though, because th this has um, rounded corners. So it feels a tiny bit off to me. Not like super off, just a tiny bit off. Like I wonder maybe if I just gave it like maybe two pixel. So that, that's pretty good, right? Oops. That's not bad. I don't know. I guess maybe straight edges works better. Yeah, I don't know why. I think the straight edges might work better. Um, okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just um, read through this. Uh, it might be a little boring, <laughs> but hopefully not. Um, it pretty much explains how a remake works. I'm gonna just read through it one more time before putting it up on the site with our built-in tour, which I can actually preview for it for you guys first. Um, so right here, I'm gonna uncomment that and save. And now on our local version, uh, this is just like an initial preview. It doesn't have all the content and it's not actually like, yeah. And like these buttons are obviously not <laughs> permanent. So, but this is how it will look, and this is like the live version. And then you'll be able to click next, and it'll go to the next step. And then I'll highlight that, and then this text in here will change. So it'll highlight this, go to the next step, highlight that, go to the next step. Um, and we built this all uh, yesterday, or most of it yesterday. Did some designing ahead of time. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna read through the text real quick one more time. Okay, so first slide is a simpler approach to web apps. Remake transforms HTML into a language that can store structured data and allows you to easily make that data editable. All you need to know is a few simple attributes to get started. I like it. Okay, the data O type equals object attribute. Converting an element into data. This attribute means the element it's on has an output type of object. This means that when the page's HTML is converted to structured data, this element will, re will represent this element represents a JSON object. Present tense is always better, I think. Okay, that looks that sounds good. Data O key equals to do's. HTML as a nested data structure. This attribute means that the data that's outputted by its element should be nested under a key called todos. Since this element is inside the first object element, its data will also be nested inside that first object. Okay, pretty good. Might be a little confusing <laughs> to people. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to figure it out. Converting HTML into a list of data. This attribute indicates that its element has an output type of a list. This means this element will be converted into a, this element, let's just use the same word as before, represents a JSON array, i.e. list, that wraps its child uh, elements data that wraps its child elements data mm. when the page, that's a little confusing. It's like trying to fit in a lot at once, a lot of information, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll just use it for now. This means this element represents a JSON array, i.e. list. Um, Uh, when it's or er, when it's converted, its child elements data uh, will be added to the list to this list. This means this. Uh, this means this element represents a JSON array, i.e. list, 
when it's converted um, Yeah, might be helpful to add a slide before that gives the broader context. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I was trying to like cover it all very quickly, but I think you, I think you're right. It's like a lot to take in. Uh, it, yeah, it is covered on other parts of the site, but ideally they would be able to kind of figure most things out from um, this tutorial. Hey, uh, Liga One Gamos V2, welcome to the stream again. Welcome back. Okay, so this uh, this means this element represents a JSON array when um, when it's converted to an array. Is child elements data will be inside it. Okay, let's just leave that there for now, and let's think about. So you're thinking like back, even before this, because I did try to kind of allude to it in this first slide, in this first thing. Remake transforms HTML into a language that can store structured data. <laughs> so I mean, not very much. Uh, I'm not alluding to it very much, but structured data, I think. I'm trying to kind of imply that it's like hierarchical. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, I think I need to maybe just have this slide first to just show that you can convert elements into objects. And then in this next one, like before this next one, um, yeah, I think maybe here would be the point to add it. What do you think about that? I guess you, you're not really, you're probably not very sure because you can't see all of these. Um, okay. I'm gonna see if this exports them in order. Hopefully it does. Um, yeah. What the heck? It didn't export them in order. That stinks. Well, I think someone has to have some knowledge um, of HTML before they learn remake. I don't want to Yeah, I don't want to assume that they don't know anything because that's gonna that's like I think eventually it'd be great but For now, it's just hard enough to explain it to like very technical people um, And I ideally I want beginners to be able to use this um, But I think they at least need to learn they at least need to know some HTML and CSS probably. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, just kind of like a refresher. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So can I, let's see, we're gonna put 10 above there. Nine above there, twelve, eight. <laughs> Everything's backwards. Seven. Four can go up. Two, 
One. Okay, awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the feedback. I re yeah, that's awesome. And I'll I'll be in touch with you, and then we can talk and hopefully share ideas. Um, and I, I hope it'll be rewarding for both of us. Have a have a great weekend. See you later. Okay, so I'm just getting this in order so that. If someone wants to take a look at it, uh, I can export it and they can see it. Okay, so now this is an order. Now I can export this. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go back here and I think we just want to make sure make uh, make it clear in between here and uh, in between here and here that if you nest uh, an element inside of another element um, yeah and then we can call this one labeling and I don't know how to spell labeling I think it's just one L mm, yep okay labeling nested data okay and then we can call this one uh well what did this used to be called html as a nested data structure okay let's do that one html as a nested data structure sk dev welcome to the channel okay so I think yeah we're gonna say um, so I think what they what do they, what do they need to know they need to know that in H, HTML has a hierarchy and JSON has a hierarchy and you can use the structure of HTML to create the structure of your JSON and all you have to do is just label nested elements and they're going to be labeled as keys inside of the parent objects in the JSON. So um, let's say using HTML as a nested data structure and we'll say um, remakes the or we'll say like the key to remake or the the secret to remake remakes power is its ability to um grab data from a page Grab data from a page, grab nested data directly from a page's elements. Um, as a developer, uh, you tag elements as containing data and remake handles the rest. If an element is inside another one, its data will be inside the other data. Will also probably <laughs> will also be inside the other data. Okay, so Let's shorten this a little bit, but I think this is pretty good for this for this slide. It's not perfect, but we can ship with this for now. So using HTML as a nested data structure. Um, I think we can just say HTML as a nested data structure. The secret tree makes power is its ability to, to 
extract uh, data, a nested data, hmm, a deeply nested data structure from a pages elements. As a developer, um, we can just say like, you um, add attributes to elements that have data. You add special attributes to elements that have data and remake handles the rest. If an element um, in order to create, in order to put data, hmm, one piece of data inside another, simply nest the elements. <laughs> uh, okay, still a little bit long. Um, HTML has a nested data structure. The secret to Remix power is its ability to extract a deeply nested data structure um, using the pages natural structure. Okay. Um, if an element with data on it is put inside another element that also has data, uh, its data will be inside the parent data. Okay, gotta just come up with a really simple way of saying that. How would I say that as a normal person? Okay, um, okay. Secret to Remix power is its ability to extract a nested data structure, uh, extract and save um, a nested. Hmm. The secret to Remix power is its ability to convert a page's structure into the foundation for a nested data structure. It is natural. The secret to Remake's power is its ability to convert a page's natural structure into the foundation into JSON. <laughs> uh, the secret to Remix power is its ability to convert a page's um, hierarchical structure into JSON. Is there another word for hierarchical? Uh, HTML is hierarchy. How about tree structure? The secret to Remix power is its ability to convert a page's tree structure into pages natural tree structure into JSON. How about like when you're building, <coughs> building an app, if you have a series of <coughs> items in a list, Remake will <coughs> um, uh, you probably um, 
want to store them, want to save them that way. Remake handles this automatically. I'm not sure, I don't think that's the right approach. HTML as a nested data structure. The secret to Remake's power is its ability to convert a page's natural tree structure into uh, a JSON tree, no, into JSON. When you're building an app, if you have a series of items in a list, no, when you're building an app, you often want to nest one item's data inside another piece of data. In Remake, you do this by nesting elements, the elements. Okay, HTML as a nested data structure. The secret to Remake's power is its ability to convert a page's natural tree structure into JSON. When you're building an app, you often want to nest one item's data inside another piece of data. In Remake, you do this by in Remake, you do this by simply by nesting the elements. That's fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's not like amazing, but at least we have that step there. Um, that's fine. Okay, labeling nested data. This attribute means that the data <coughs> that's outputted, outputted by its element should be under a key called todos. Since this element is inside the first object element, its data will also, its data will be nested inside that object. Okay. Converting HTML into a list of data. This attribute indicates that its element has an output type of list. This means this element represents a JSON array list. When it's converted into an array, its child elements data will be inside of it. Bloodluster, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Sortable list, uh, sortable items from a single attribute. Um, sortable items with a single attribute. This attribute is used to input data into the page by making the elements inside it uh, by making items inside this element sortable with drag and drop. This attribute is used. This attribute makes the item, the elements, the child elements inside this attribute makes the child elements inside of it inside of its element <laughs> this attribute makes the child elements inside of its element <laughs> such an awkward phrasing this attributes the, ch <laughs> the children of this attributes element <laughs> this attribute makes um, its element a sortable area so users can rearrange um, child elements with drag and drop. This attribute makes its element a sortable area so users can rearrange child elements with drag and drop. Perfect. Since all data in Remake is stored directly on the page, changing the element's order will uh, reorders the data. Present tense again. Okay, perfect. For to do in to do's, displaying a list of items. If you have a list of items in your data, you need, uh, you'll need uh, you'll need a way to display uh, each one of them. Remake provides a simple for helper. 
which allows you to label each item as you render it to the page. Perfect. Uh, putting data uh, into a list. We've seen this attribute before. Um, no. Uh, let's just say data or like creating a list of data. No. Um, data in a list. Um, an object or objects data in a list putting adding no adding implies that there's an action we're just like saving data to a list how about that saving data to a list no hmm I'm just going to say data in a list. Data in a list. We've seen this attribute before. It means that the element it's on has an output type of object. This time, however, this element is inside a list element. So the final data will be objects inside the list. Perfect. Um, Grab data from the page. Grabbing, grabbing data from the page. This attribute means this element has some data. Um, and a location, which should be labeled with a key called text. By default, the location um, I'm going to just make this the green color. The location, it looks for the value of the key <laughs> by default. The location, it looks for, um, it looks for its value in is the current elements inner text. By default, the location it looks for its value in is the current elements inner text. Much more clearly stated. Making data editable. This attribute is used to input data into the page by making its element, uh, by making the data on its element editable. Clicking this element, clicking an element with this attribute uh, will trigger an editable popover. Um, which is built into Remake. Clicking an element with this um, attribute will trigger an editable pop over uh, that doesn't it doesn't read well clicking an element with this attribute will trigger an editable popover um, this popover comes with remake uh, too many um, Clicking an element with this attribute triggers an editable, an edit, editable popover. This, the popover, <laughs> the popover. Uh, clicking an element with If you click an element with this, when a user clicks an element 
with this attribute an editable popover will appears hmm. when a user clicks an element with this attribute an editable an editable area will appear this area when a user clicks an element with this attribute an editable area <laughs> dungus tv <laughs> what's up <laughs> uh you got a funny name um what how who are you <laughs> uh where did you come from um do you have your own channel? Product Hunt, awesome. Welcome, uh, thanks for stopping by. I'm working on a little uh, code like walkthrough uh, for Remake, this framework I'm working on. That makes it really easy to build web apps with HTML. Uh, what are you working on? Are you launching anything? Uh, do you spend a lot of time on Product Hunt? Um, oh, you took a look at Remake yesterday. Awesome, thank you, I really appreciate that. Did, did any of it make sense to you? I actually am getting a lot of feedback recently that's like, I don't understand what this is. So I'm a little worried about that. And that's part of why I'm making this uh, walkthrough so that people will be more likely to understand what it is. Um, user clicks an element, uh, clicks this element, and an editable popover will appear. This notable area will appear. This popover comes built in to remake. Uh, oh, try joining the stream, but it was already passed. Honestly, I looked up the example you have right there, and that was it. Okay, cool. Well, I, I do appreciate you. Um, I appreciate the interest. Um, what, are you, what are you working on? When a user clicks this element, an edible popover will appear. This popover comes built into Remake. That's fine. Okay, default to do dot text new to do item. Rendering text with fallback. If you want to use some data on your page, but you're not totally sure it's available, um, It'll be available. No, we'll just say it's available. You can provide a fallback. Remake provides a default helper that uses a provided value if it's there, but defaults do some fallback text. Um, Meta Nutrition, computational nutrition platform to sum it up. Huh. Okay. I am um, very, very confused about what that means. What I'm thinking is you gather stats from a bunch of people, like thousands and thousands of people, and track their health over time uh, and their diet, and then you're going to give me advice based on that. But that's just a random guess. Not really sure exactly what you do. And what the benefit is. Am I going to lose weight? Am I going to feel healthier? Am I going to feel more alive? Um, oh, and is that the name of your company? Meta Nutri Yeah, that must be the name of your company. At first I thought this was like a... Um, I didn't think this was a brand, but I see it's capitalized, so it must be. But it seemed like when I first read it, I was like, oh, that's something I should know about in the, nutritional, in, in the nutrition space. Meta Nutrition. Um, you know, like it's like a subject, not a company. Uh, so that might be interesting to you. I think if it was one word, it would be a lot clearer to me. Uh, Remake provides a default helper that uses a provided value if it's there, but defaults to some fallback text. Okay, that's good. Uh, we'll just say a 
fallback value. If you want to use some data on your page, but you're not totally sure it's available, you can provide a fallback. Remake provides a default helper that uses a provided value that's there, but defaults to a fall fallback value. Okay, well, computational, more on a micro level, sorry. We provide the best nutrition possible based on your goals, foods, diet restrictions. You have a ship. Okay, cool. Well, feel free to post your ship in the chat um, and people can check it out. Um, I guess I am, so uh, are you looking for feedback? If you're not looking for feedback, I don't, I won't give you feedback, but I will tell you my concerns if you're looking for feedback. Creating a new item. How about like adding a new item to the page? This attribute is used to input new items into the page by rendering a template that matches its named value. When this element is clicked, it takes the to-do template from inside the for loop and renders it uh, to the nearest to the list. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Build powerful web apps quickly. Um, Remake gives web app capabilities to mm, ordinary HTML. So you can build interactive web uh, <laughs> so you can build interactive websites fast. So I'm spending thousands of hours building products. Start creating valuable uh, value starting. Um, I don't know. This doesn't exactly resonate. Remake gives web app capabilities to ordinary HTML, so you can build interactive websites fast. Stop spending thousands of hours building products. Uh, start delivering value 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 instantly. Oh, that's good. Start delivering real value instantly. I like that. It's not bad. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we're gonna take all of this content and we're gonna we're gonna plug it into the system. Okay, so first things first. Did you post? You didn't post your ship, dude. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you want to, it would be fine. Okay, so here's the thing. Whew, we have a few things to worry about. So one is that not all of these steps have elements that they're gonna highlight. So this one does not, this one does not. And the last one does not. Um, and I think we also, we have 13 steps now, but if I look at this, oh, what? It's 13? Oh no, 10. 10 steps. Sorry, I have 10 steps. Okay, so I have 10 steps, so I'm not exactly sure which steps I added, although I'm pretty sure, yeah, um, yep, it should be the last step, the first step, and the third step. That I added. So I can add three more steps here. So I'll add um, oops, one to the top. So that's the first step. And the third step. And then the last step. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And we're going to tag these as special steps. So we're gonna just say like uh, no focus element, true. Okay, and that's gonna be this one, this one, and the last one. Rubber Slayer, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. Um, and I wanna grab some water because I am 
parched right now. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Um, I think it should be good. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we want to do, um, so now we have the 13 steps. So we want to get the, um, the title, the line one and the line two, because each of these have all of those things. Okay, so let's go in here, and we're just gonna do this manually. Um, um, let's see, so let's just build the first object. So we'll say title, and then we'll just put this in there, and then we'll say line one and we'll put this in there and line two and we'll put this in there we got to make sure we don't have any quotes inside of our three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen okay um, and I don't know why I'm doing this. Oh wait, shoot. <laughs> I didn't want to delete that first one. Ah, eh, whatever. I'll just do it one at a time. Okay. So we'll do this and then this. And actually, I'm going to just scan these for quotes real quick because it's going to cause an issue and I'm not going to want to look for them later. We have single quotes are fine. Yeah, it's just the the like double quote. Um, we'll break it out of the JSON and make it an invalid JSON. I don't think I have any double quotes. I think I used to, but then I deleted them. Just doing a quick scan. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we'll go back here. Converting this attribute means, okay. Okay, cool, cool. So put that in there. Next. So this is number three. Okay, just confirming. Um, up here, got line number one. Line number two, and line number three. Okay. Um, next. Okay, one. And we're gonna also have to colorize all of this, but we'll do that next. Uh, this is the title. Okay. It's about to get fun, I swear. <laughs> well, the hard part is just uh, doing the content stuff. But the fun part is making it all work. Um, which is coming soon. Okay. Um, there is probably a faster way of doing this, like extracting data from sketch somehow, but I don't know. I'm kind of okay with it. It's not like I have to do this a hundred times, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I guess it's almost a hundred times, <laughs> um, cause it's 13 times three. That's not really almost a hundred times. 13 times three is 39. It's not even half a hundred times. 
but it is closer to 100 than I thought it was. <laughs> um, okay, but it's going to look beautiful. So, and I think it's going to read nicely, and I think it's going to help people learn Remake, which is the biggest thing. If I can do that, I can finally start getting people to use it, and I can get people to um, get value from it, and maybe eventually make money from it. That would be great. Um, but the first step is just actually getting people to understand what it is, and a lot of people, right now at least, do not quite understand what it is. Um, even though I've put more than a year of work into it. So that's kind of disappointing to work on something for a year for people just not to understand <laughs> what, <laughs> what you're even doing. Um, geez. Yeah, now that I say it like that, it feels a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, it makes sense. It's uh, it's internally consistent, and it it works for me. I mean, I guess if, in the worst case scenario, um, I can just use it to build things. Uh, and we have another line here. Um, we're going to just delete this line. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, so um, let's grab all of this. Okay, so we're going to Turn off word wrap. We're going to grab all the titles here, all the way to the end. Great. And I think this is. Oh, do we have commas? <laughs> we don't have commas. We only have commas after the first one. Okay. So let's. Oh, nope. This is going to be an issue. Okay, so let's select line one, uh, go to the end. Oh wait, line two does not need a comma, because it's the last one. Okay, sorry, being stupid. Okay, so, okay, we got all of this. We're gonna copy that, and then we're going to grab our scroll tops right here, and um, insert this here, add the commas, because we will need it now. <laughs> um, oh, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. Um, I have 13 here. Oh, what is this? What? Okay, let's try this one more time. Select that down to there. I have 13 selections, 13 places to put it in. Ay, ay, ay. Not sure exactly why that didn't work. 13 regions. Um, I guess we can put this all in. Why isn't this working? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let's try one more time. So we'll select all the titles, go to the end, delete, go to the end, delete. Um, where are we now? Okay, go to the beginning, go to the end, copy, paste. Okay, that seems to wor have worked. Then I will go in here. Now we're going to select all the line ones. 
we're going to go, go down, and now we're going to select all the line twos. And go down. And now all the line twos need a comma at the end. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, and we want to de-indent this, I believe. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now we have the line one, line two, and the title. So um, when we get our next step, we get the config, and we have line one, line two. Tour step active. So we remove the tour step, we got the current tour element, we add it to active. Now we want to get each part of it. So these info text. Okay, so we'll do info text one and two. So we'll get this this and this, and let's delete the, the, the like demo data in there. Okay, that's good. And we're gonna delete this one too. Okay, and then down here, I'm gonna insert content, query selector. Um, we'll put in the title is going to be config for step. So we'll say inner HTML equals config for step. And I believe it's just title, right? We just name it a title and then line one, line two. Okay. So title. Okay. Now we'll get the line one, line two. So we got text one and text two and text one and text two. And then we're gonna um, animate it. Now, there's a slight problem because right now, when we get all of the steps, so if I do this one here on the page, we get 10 elements, but the problem is we have 13 steps. So right here, um, where we get the tour current element, it's not gonna be accurate for um, for three of those steps. So we don't really need that active class. And we don't need to set the inner HTML, um, but we do wanna remove the active stuff here. So let's remove the active class. Okay. Okay, got that. Now we're going to get the config for the step and the tour current step. Now we only really need to worry about the tour current step if config, uh, what was it called? No focus element. So if this is false, so if there is a focus element, then we want to do, then we want to get the current element. 
and we want to set the active class and the content. Otherwise, we don't really care. So let's try that. <clears throat> okay, now, did the tour start? <laughs> what? Okay, so I believe I have a start tour at the bottom. Okay, so start tour. Um, oh, it'll trigger next step if you click start tour again. Uh, I guess I'm okay with that. Uh, VNK, welcome to the chat. So why am I not getting, oh, um, <laughs> tour current step. This is not what I want. I want the code example element. Okay, let's push that over there. Okay, so we need to get the index HTML. Um, and say code example and Oh shoot. Where what where is this? Before and tort info. So this is what I want. Tor info. Let's see if I select this anywhere. I don't. Okay, so instead of this, I want document query selector all. Um and we can just put tour info in here. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be the only one on the page, but just to be sure. Um, and we have this there. Okay. So this is not going to require the current element. So insert step. Okay, so this we can make happen afterwards. And now it should work. So now we should get that first step undefined, undefined. Okay, so we're making progress. <laughs> we get the title. Oh, it's line one and line two. Okay, line one and line two, okay. There we go. A simpler approach to, re to web apps. Remake transforms HTML into a language that can store structured data and allows you to easily make that data editable. All you need to know is a few simple attributes to get started. Okay, now let's make this uh, next button work. So our next button is Um, so these are our event listeners, and we're just going to move these to the bottom. Um, and I'm not going to start the tour by default. And tour next. So let's just see what do I use for that? Okay, tour info button next. Okay. So we'll place that in there, and then we can get rid of this one. Okay, cool. So I think that should work. <laughs> oh yeah, the tour's when I started, okay. Started, and now I can go next. Huh, next. So it's all broken. <laughs> Not exactly sure what's happening here. So yeah, it, um, oh, yeah. So it's confused because it's looking 
So it's increasing the index. Um, which makes sense. So Tor steps elements. We just need to we need we either need to add some null values to that array. Um, Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab these step elements, tour step config. So I'm going to have this be like, um, like an underscore. Um, and then I'm going to assemble the final one by mapping over this. Um, and just saying, uh, so if config, if config, if so, if it doesn't have a focus element, then just return null. Otherwise, it's going to take the first one out of here. And I believe if we have an array and we do, um, it's what is it, unshift? Jeez, I really don't know how JavaScript works. What, okay, so no, unshift is adding it to the beginning. So we want shift, uh, I think. <laughs> and put push is to add it to the end, and isn't there like a, a splice one? I don't even know. How do you, JS remove first item from array. It might just all be splice, or not splice. Um, yeah, splice. What does shift do? Removes the first item of the array, changes the length, is the removed item. Okay. So I should just be able to do this. Shift, shift, shift. Okay. So we're going to just do this. Dot shift. And if I was making a reusable library, I would never write code like this, but we have control over the code, so I think it's kind of okay. Okay, so now we can't read some inner HTML. Let's see what that is. Tour steps elements for each. Uh-huh, yep, that makes sense. So that's this one. We're getting, yeah, okay. So we, we only want to do this if we have an element. So we're going to say if l, then do these things. Otherwise, don't do anything. Okay. Why is this script black box by debugger? What does this mean? Okay, whatever. Um, okay, so now we're going to start this tour again. Go next. Nice. Nice. Okay, this is great.
So, a couple problems. Um, the main one is that this, um, I want this to be at the top of the page if, um, if there's no, if there's no focus element. So, um, basically, that's going to involve, if there's no focus element, we just want to add a class to this. Um, that just says like tor no focus element. And then else removes that class. Okay. And then we can go into our tour and we can see where we're going to bottom align the tour info. So it's definitely right there. Um, okay, so tour info. So we're going to say code example tour no focus element. That's fine. And then we're going to say tour info bottom auto top is going to be uh, where, where, where it's looking at. So I think it's, it's going to be the same. No, it's going to be, oh, well, I think it's going to be the same. So let's just try it. 24px. Um, and we'll start tour. Okay, so something's going wrong now. So we've got, huh. So that's um, weird. If there's no focus element, add this to code example element, which is just, yeah, just that. Hmm. Okay, let's try going next. Okay, there we go. So start tour, a simpler approach. Okay, so what happened there? Start tour, just added tour active, that's all. Feel I feel like it like glitched out a little bit. Okay, so why? Simpler approach, converting, okay. So I probably have this backwards. Oh, oh yeah, this is, there is a focus element. Okay, so let's, <laughs> let's remove this. So if there is no, fo yeah, okay, sorry, it was a double negative. <laughs> so if there is no focus element, then Um, we want to add the class. Otherwise, there is a focus element. We want to get the current element and we want to add a class to it that says that it's active. Okay, perfect. Yep, I just had it backwards. I was just confused by the double negative. Okay, so there we go. Boom, that appears at the top. We say next. It goes to the bottom. Next, goes to the top. Um, it's a little, it's a little weird. It's not terrible. Let's try it again. So start tour. This is at the top. Next, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, very, very nice. Um, data in a list, data in a list. In, I think I'm gonna say inside. I don't know, it just sounds a little bit better. 
Okay, so now we need to, uh, Commander Root, welcome to the chat. So now we need to do a few things to clean up, but first I'm gonna just commit this code. So we're gonna just say like, added to our content, getting it to work together. Okay, so let's just make sure we don't have any JavaScript errors. Okay, so the first thing is, is if the tour is not um, started, we don't want this backdrop and we don't want this to display. So there's, um, I think the main solution is just to not show them if the tour is not active. So that's gonna just be this one, it's gonna be display none. And the info is going to be this way now. So tour info and tour backdrop. And we're going to do that, comma, backdrop, display, black. Oh, and we can also add this extra scroll area. Perfect. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. Perfect. Nice. Now I do start tour. <laughs> uh, what happened to my content? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not there. Hmm. We got the backdrop though. Tour info does not want to show up though. Display, it's display none. Did I get the wrong? Oh, I, I just did tour backdrop twice. Okay, cool. Okay, so now it's there. Um, Beldathas, welcome to the stream. Um, so now I can go next step, next step, next step, next step, next step. This one's a little tight. Sortable, sortable items with an attribute. Sortable with a single attribute. Okay, sort, oh wait. Sort, sortable, okay. That'll be better. I just wanna make sure nothing looks like super weird in the content before we move to the next step. Okay, so this looks fine. That like barely fits in there, but yeah, it's fine. That fits, that's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. That's good. This is nice. Okay, this sucks. Okay, so let's search for totally. Oh shit. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go through this. Next, 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 next. Next, next. Okay, and we're here. Um, still crappy. If you want to use some data, um, but you're not sure it's available, you can provide a fallback value. Okay, so let's try this. Um, if you want to use some data, but you're not sure it's available, you can provide a fallback value. That works. Available. Okay. Um, what did I even copy? Okay, I copied the whole thing. Okay, Remake provides a default helper that uses the provided value if it's there the defaults to another, I think another value would be good. Um, and it's a little long, but like, it's fine. I don't, it doesn't really matter. Like I, I'll fix, I'm like gonna look at this a million times, I'm sure. Um, Hmm. 
Okay. Fall back. Okay, and this one was also too too long. Um, this attribute is used to input new items into the page by rendering a template that matches its name's value. Name value. And this element is clicked. and adds it to the list. Right like here, we're just gonna say, no, okay. I do like renders better too. Um, this attribute is used to input uh, new items into the page by rendering a template that matches, let's just say its value instead of its named value. Yeah, named. Get rid of that. When this element is clicked, it takes the to do template from inside, from, uh, I think we can just say, in the for loop. Okay, cool. Um, so let's try one more time. That, that, I'm just looking for like general looks that it, it looks okay. It looks like it's like functional. It doesn't look like nothing super weird about it. Okay, that's nice. Um, so I think the, uh, we'll just say like cleaning up content. So I think another thing that would be nice is, is changing this uh, next button to say done if we're on the last step. So, um, We're gonna say if, else, and we're gonna grab this, tour info, this next button, I'm gonna say inner text equals done, um, or it equals uh, next. Um, and it's going to say done if the, um, the current tour step, <laughs> so we're increasing the current tour step every time we trigger the next step. So this is going to be equal, um, so current tour step equals how much? on last step, on last step, current tour step is going to equal what? So we have the tour step config, which is, I believe 13 items. Yep, 13 items. So, um, so this um, is gonna be on the last step. So it's gonna equal so it's gonna equal twelve. It's twelve. Okay. So we're gonna say Oh you had to <laughs> you had to run real quick. Okay, no problem. Um so we're gonna say equals but we don't wanna I want to say it like that. Uh, minus one. What are you building your tutorial in? Um, what am I building? Like how? Like what language am I using to build the tutorial? Uh, it is JavaScript and a little bit of jQuery actually mixed in. Um, but just because I already have jQuery on this site, 
Um, so yeah, we're gonna say current torso. So if we're on the last step, on last step, are you using the library or from scratch? Uh, so I'm doing it from scratch actually. I was, I was gonna use the library, but um, it didn't offer like a ton of flexibility and I didn't like how it looked. Like I wanted control over the design. Um, and it didn't really take that long to get this far. And I feel like we, um, we got pretty far. We got this, next, 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 next. And it's got like a nice little animation here with this line, got a nice syntax highlighting over the thing we're highlighting. Um, and this should say done. Oh no, that should say done, perfect. Now that says done, and then start, and then it's gonna say next again. That's great. Okay, so that, that worked, the done, the done section, the done problem. <laughs> okay, so next is gonna be closing it. So closing it doesn't do anything right now. Um, so we're gonna say like, I guess end, end tour. Yeah, let's make a function that ends the tour. And we already have the code for that because we're ending the tour if we're past the last step. So we're taking the code example, we're removing um, the tour active, we're setting the, core tour, the current tour step back to minus one, because um, <laughs> I'm crazy. Then we're getting all the tour step uh, active things and removing that class. And then we're also animating, we're like scrolling it back up to the top. So I think that's, oh, we should also remove that, that done thing. Uh, okay. So we're gonna do this. Although, actually it'll be fine. The done thing will be fine because it sets it on every step. So that's, that's okay. So then we can do, we can just paste end tour into here and that should still work. And then we can also add an event listener on, uh, I don't know what it's called, on this button, close. Oops, I think I, I used too much. Okay, so we'll do that one, and then we're just gonna do end tour. Um, I think that'll work. So start tour, end tour, start tour, next, 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 um, close, start tour, and we're back to the beginning. Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna argue, it works. Okay, so let's see. There's, I think there's probably another step or two that I need to do. Oh yeah, I need to add the start tour button, like a nicely styled start tour button. Okay, so we'll say like allow canceling tour, change, close, um, next to done on last step. Um, I don't know. <laughs> doesn't mean it need to be super descriptive. Um, okay, cool. So let's add this button, button down here that we designed very quickly. Over here, uh, right here. Okay, so we're gonna add this button down here. So let's um, grab this. And we're gonna put it, so we have code example, we have the heading, code example is gonna go down, 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 down. Okay, right here, and then we're gonna add the tour start button. Mm. Okay. 
And I don't think I have any styles for this. Okay. Do I have any buttons in here? Yeah, I do. So I'll put it down by the buttons, even though these are different buttons, but that's okay. So we can say tour start, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna import um, a little mix in here to reset a button. I forget how we do that. <laughs> how we do this? Where do I use this? Um, custom. There we go. Okay, include. I always forget include. Okay, so we're gonna reset our button. Let's see what it looks like. Beautiful, completely reset. Um, and we're gonna have a little headline. So we're gonna say, let's go into our index. And we're gonna do class, tour, start container. And that's gonna allow us to like center this and everything. And then we're gonna have a uh, div class tour start headline, I guess. <laughs> um, and we can just put in, see how it works. See how it works. And then this is gonna be uppercase. Um, okay, cool. Um, and the code example, so let's go into the code example. We want a margin bottom of maybe like 48 pixels. That seems pretty fair. And then we got our tour. So we got tour start above here. We're gonna have tour start container. And then uh, tour start headline. The container, well this is, uh, I think the container can just be like text align center and that's gonna work. Although I don't feel great about that because then the margin between them is not ideal. So let's just delete that actually. Um, let's figure out this headline first. So uh, font family. We're gonna grab this font family here. So it's monospace. Um, for the headline, we're gonna do font weight bold. Oh, and do I want the start tour? Oh, yeah, I think I do want the start tour to actually have that same font family. So we'll add it up there. So do font weight, font size. I think the default is 16 and it looks a little big right here. So yeah, well, 15 might be a little better. Okay, and then we're gonna change the color to this color. Now, how are we gonna center this? Um, oh wait, no, the, t the text align does work. Yeah, the text align does work. We just do text align center here, and then margin, bottom, uh, I don't know, let me try 16 pixels. Okay, now let's style our button so that we know more about how this is gonna look. So the first thing, let's just give it a background. Oh, we got the color right there. Background color. And I believe it's set to be inline block, so we should have no problem with um, colors. Oh, sorry, not colors. Um, that just slipped into my head. We should have no problem with uh, padding. Okay, so let's do padding. 14, 20, and 16. So 14 px, 20 px, and 16 px. Um, okay, starting to look pretty nice. Uh, we need to bold this thing in here. Uh, so the, yeah, this button, we want like font weight 800. I don't even know if there is such a thing. Uh, it's too much. Okay, so we'll do 700. That's better. And 
We're also going to decrease the font size. No, actually, I think font size should come before font weight. Okay, so we'll do font size. I mean, I guess we'll try 15 pixels. Actually, it kind of looks fine. Because, um, like, the boldness around it kind of makes up for it. Okay, so let's um, increase that to 15. A little extra padding on the top. And then let's add a box shadow. So we're going to do, I believe it's 4px, 4px, 0. And then we have a special color for this. OK. Boom. Oh, and we need to give it a cursor. A cursor, pointer, and a hover style. Um, I kind of think it'd be cool if the box shadow uh, shifted a little bit. So maybe just like to the right. So like maybe like 6px. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't love it. Um, we can try maybe shifting it both. Yeah, that feels a little bit nicer. I'm not sure if um, transition works on box shadow. I, probably it doesn't. Let's just test it out. <laughs> it works. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. Okay, let's make it like 0.2, I guess. That's pretty good. It's like a little subtle. But it's kind of nice. And then we're going to change the background color here. Um, so let's grab our color app. And do we want to make this lighter or darker? I guess we'll just make it a little lighter. Okay. Um, hmm. I guess that's fine. Uh, I'm not like in love with it, but that's pretty good. That's pretty okay. And I think we should just have maybe like a, no, I don't know. I don't really like it. Yeah, I don't really like it. Um, it's not bad. But I think it's it actually might just be enough with just the box shadow. Oh, thank you, thank you, Dungus. Oh yeah, you were trying you were talking earlier about oh yeah computational micro level. Oh yeah, I was wondering if you wanted feedback on that. And yeah, feel free to to share your ship with the chat if you want your ship page. Um. I think I could have like a little gleam at the top. Uh, CSS, background, gradient. I just always forget how to do this. Like I, for I always forget the syntax for this. Um, okay, so it's pretty easy. So do background. linear gradient, and we're going to go from this to this at the bottom, but then at the top, we're going to have this lighter one. So it's going to just get like a little sheen. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not bad. Oh, you're attempting a remote day. So at your, at your startup, you're like you're working with a team of people. That's cool. You're working on the weekend. That's tough. Um, yeah, so if anyone wants to check this out, uh, Dungus TV is launching this soon. You're, okay. You're Austin, co-founder of Meta Nutrition, the platform that knows what to eat. 
That's cute. Proper nutrition can help you accomplish anything. It's our mission to show people how powerful eating healthy is by providing you with the best nutrition day in, day out, based on your preferences. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to say that, like, this sounds cool, um, but it doesn't, like, grab me in a way that I think it could. Um, oh, jeez. Monday is Saturday, no time for sleep. That's heavy. Um, but, like, this proper nutrition can help you accomplish anything. Instead of anything, I would much rather that say, like, exactly what is going to help me accomplish. Because I feel like when you say anything, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Also, I'm very concerned about nutrition products in general because there's a lot of studies around them and no one really knows what's up. So it would be really cool if you had some way of showing that you are more in tune with the nutrition space than like the average person with like a, you know, like a blog or whatever. Um, but it sounds like a really good idea. It does sound like a good idea. And the interface looks nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I would just like focus more on like what it, what is it actually going to help me with? Like, of course, I want to eat well, but you know, like, how is it going to change my life? You know, I don't know. I hope that's good feedback. Okay, so we do start tour. And then a simple approach to web apps. Numeric transforms HTML into a language that you can store structured data. Oh, sorry. That can store structured data. How about that? Uh, that you can store structured data in. Okay, Remake transforms HTML into a language that you can store structured data in and allows you to easily make that data editable. All you need to know is a few simple attributes to get started. Converting an element into data. This attribute means the element it's on has an output type of object. This means that when the page's HTML is converted to structured data, this element represents a JSON object. HTML as an, as an S data structure. The secret to Remix power is its ability to convert a page's natural tree structure into JSON. When you're building an app, you often want to nest one item's data inside another piece of data. One item inside one piece of data inside another. One one piece of data inside another. In Remake, you do this by nesting the elements. By nesting elements. Okay. Start, next, next. Okay. The secret to Remake's power is its ability to convert a page's natural tree structure into JSON. When you're building a, a, an app, you often want to nest one piece of data inside another. In Remake, you do this by nesting elements. Labeling nested data. This attribute means that, that the data that's outputted by its element should be nested under a key called produce. Since this element is inside the first object element, its data will be nested inside that object. Okay. Converting HTML into a list of data. This attribute indicates that its element has an output type of list. This means this element represents a JSON array, i.e. list. When it's converted to an array, its child elements data will be inside it. Sortable with a single attribute. This attribute makes its element a sortable area, so users can rearrange child elements with drag and drop. Since all data in Remake is stored directly on the page, changing the element's order where is the data? 
you have a list of items in your data, you'll need a way to display each one of them. Mimic provides a simple for helper, which allows you to label each item as you render it to the page. Data inside a list. We've seen this attribute before. It means that the element it's on has an output type of object. This time, however, this element is inside a list element, so the final data will be objects inside a list. And data from the page. This attribute means this element has some data at a location, which should be uh, labeled with a key called text. By default, the location it looks for its value in is the current element's inner text. Being data editable, this attribute is used to input data into the page by making the data on its own editable. When a user clicks this element, an editable popper will appear. This popper comes built into Remake. If you want to use some data, but you're not sure it's available, this is badly written. Um, if you want, um, if you want to display, uh, Remake provides a default helper. Okay. Um, Sometimes you'll have a piece of data Sometimes you'll have a piece of data that um might not be present that sometimes you'll have a piece of data um, that's only present sometimes. Remake provides a default, uh, a helper called default that uses a provided value if it's there, but default to a backup value. Okay, nice. Um, oh, and we saved it, so it got pulled away. Okay, sometimes you'll have a piece of data that's only present sometimes. Remake provides a helper called default that uses a provider value if it's there, but defaults to a backup value. Adding a new item to the page. This attribute is used to input new items into the page by rendering a template that matches its value. When this element is clicked, it takes the to-do template from the nearby for loop from the nearby for loop Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, from a nearby for loop uh, and renders it to um, the list. Okay, oh, oops, I saved again. Okay, let's go through these. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Last step, build powerful web apps quickly. Remake gives web app capabilities to ordinary HTML, so you can build interactive web app websites fast. Stop spending thousands of hours building products. Start delivering real value now. Uh, start delivering value to your customers instantly. I think not instantly. Start delivering real value to your customers, to your users, uh, start delivering real value to your users 
um, faster. Okay, let's see how that reads. Okay, next, 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 next. Build powerful web apps quickly. Remake gives web app capabilities to ordinary HTML so you can build interactive websites fast. Stop spending thousands of hours building products. Start delivering real value to uh, users. Um, deliver real value to users. Uh, quickly deliver real value to users um, quickly okay oh shoot save it again <laughs> okay one more time through Build powerful web apps quickly. Remake gives web app capabilities to ordinary HTML so you can build interactive websites fast. Stop spending thousands of hours building products. Deliver real value to users quickly. Yeah. Start delivering real value to users quickly. Start delivering real value to users um, from day one. Start delivering real value to users from day one. <laughs> Hi, Sullivan. Yes, I'm doing a, a quick little stream. Um, you want to see what, what we made? It's pretty exciting. So we have this little code example on the Remake homepage. Um, and, you can, and you can use it. So you can like reorder these to-dos. You can edit it, um, you can add new items, and it's all just in this like little piece of HTML. And I have a tour now. So now if you click Start Tour, this comes up. Simpler approach to web apps. And this isn't deployed yet, but it will be soon. And then you can go Next, and I've got that little animation, highlights the attribute uh, one at a time, kind of shows you what all the different attributes mean so you can kind of uh, figure out how everything fits together and then it says build powerful web apps quickly remake gives web app capabilities uh, to ordinary html so you can build interactive websites fast stop spending thousands of hours building products start delivering real value to users uh maybe let's just say today i'm not sure exactly <laughs> But I think that's that's fine. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's what I've been working on the past couple of days, uh, just trying to make sure people actually know what Remake is and how it works. I'm also playing around with some uh, new headlines. Maybe I could uh, A/B test them with you. Um, actually, I'm not quite sure if this is done. I was going to test it cross browser. Yeah, I think it's pretty, I think it works. I think it's pretty good. Okay, nice. Are you, you're at a cafe or something? Are you, you're not working, are you? Um, okay, so uh, this is what I was thinking. I have it right here. So instead of this, um, it would be, oh, you're at home. You just woke up not too long ago, stayed up late to make sure the voice plane got to Brazil all right. Oh, yep. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's hard. Um, that's, uh, that's cool. So yeah, you, you slept in a little bit. Um, he slept in until pi o'clock. Um, 
That's awesome. Uh, how's your, is your wife going there for um, a conference or something or for work? Um, and how, how is she doing? Capabilities to ordinary HTML. Oh, okay. Um, oh, nice. I'm glad, <laughs> glad you liked like that. Um, she's gone home to visit family and friends. Okay, nice. Um, that's very cool. Okay, and then here, I mean, I guess unless uh, you miss her very much, in which case it might not be super, super cool. Um, Okay, cool. We make transforms HTML. Can I wonder if I can add margin? I guess probably not. Let's just make this a div. Yeah, now this headline is way too long, but um, testing things out. Give web app capabilities to ordinary, to, I think maybe your HTML is better. To your HTML. Uh -huh. Max width. Okay. Margin right. And then, huh. Okay. Um, heading rate? I guess I could just actually force this to wrap. Okay. So maybe something like that. Um, Give web, web app capabilities to your HTML. Remake transforms HTML into a language that can store data. And allows users to easily manipulate that data. Um, I guess this could be the headline, the fastest way to build, oops, and deploy. An amazing web app. Give web app capabilities to your HTML. Remake transforms HTML into a language that can store data and allows users to easily manipulate that, manipulate that data. I don't know. It's the fastest way to build and deploy an amazing web app. Um, and then the original is get a product into people's hands by tomorrow. Create a full web app with user accounts and CRUD functionality using only HTML. 
Um, I kind of like both <laughs> a little bit. I think this pro should probably be more benefit oriented. Um, give web app superpowers to your HTML. We make transforms HTML into the language into a language transforms HTML into a language that's perfect building. Um, interactive websites. Uh, into a forms in HTML into a language language building interactive websites okay Give web app superpowers to your HTML. Remake transforms HTML into a language for building interactive web apps. Hmm. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, I'll just, I'll kind of explain the problem. So the problem is that I've been getting a lot of feedback um, that's like, I don't understand what this is. Um, like they'll come to the homepage and they'll see it. They'll like, hey, sorry, are you there? Are you there, Sullivan? I just want to make sure I'm not, I'm not talking to, to no one. Um, okay, cool. So I, and I'm just reading, uh, I just want to get this um, email up because someone gave me some feedback recently. Okay, so um, people come to this website and they're like, I love the design. It's like very friendly and nice and it seems compelling. And they're like, it seems like a product that I would be the audience for, but I'm not exactly sure what it is or how it works. Um, so like I'll, I'll show you some of the feedback. They say like, this looks nice, but after looking at the landing page for 10 plus minutes, I still don't understand what is it. I'm an experienced developer. Is this a CMS that allows you to edit HTML? Is there a database behind this? Do I host it? Do you host it? And then I kind of explain it a little bit. Um, and then another person says, the site and demo looks cool. My only concern is I'm not sure what makes this a unique solution. Among the hundreds of frameworks for different languages and levels of abstractions, uh, what is your product specifically for? Hope to see soon, good luck. <laughs> um, and then I kind of explain that it's like, it's using only HTML to build a web app and you can make everything editable and sortable and it's server rendered, so. You don't even need the front-end code if you're not a page admin. Um, someone said it's, it's a great idea, but they don't like the design. Um, which one? Is it is it this one or this one? This one? Using, like, okay. 
So this is, so I'll show you kind of like what I was brainstorming a little bit. So give WebM superpowers to your HTML. I'm not sure if it's super compelling. Remake transforms HTML into the language for building interactive web apps. And then you said, I do like what you said. Using HTML as a language to build interactive apps. You like use HTML to build interactive. Yeah, something else that I should mention is that this tweet did really well. Um, it got a lot of likes. Um, so I built a framework called Remake that lets you build an interactive website using only HTML. Build and design an app, user accounts, zero config, built in credit features. Um, yeah. But I'm, I am a little worried about getting too far away from like the benefit or like talking about benefits, you know, like talking too much about what the product is. But I guess, I don't know. I don't know, what do you think about this? Give web app superpowers to your HTML. Is it not, I kind of like it because it, it's kind of like concrete. I feel like maybe if it was dug into a little bit more, it could kind of work. How does HTML do it? Then you explain that and it reveals the benefits. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, but what do you think about this as like the main headline? I guess for me, it doesn't feel as compelling as this one. But this kind of feels like this could be anything, right? This could be a user testing tool, a prototyping tool, um, like a, a SaaS, you know, like starter template. Like, but like, yeah, it could just be talking about a lot of things though. But I do like it because it focuses on the benefit. Well, it does though. It says create a full web app with user accounts and code functionality using only HTML. But you're saying, um, do you want to uh, hop on a call? It might be easier to do this. We don't have to like do a video call or anything, but if you want to, we could do like an audio call. Um, I, think I would start the phrase with using HTML. Oop. Using HTML, you can, yeah, that's true. But it's, I think it's a lot to kind of fit in your head. Cause I think, yeah, the main question for that is gonna be like, but how, right? So, okay, here, let me write out my like fuller thing. I had this, uh, ow. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Give web app keep abilities to ordinary HTML remake transforms HTML into a language that can store data in a structured format and allows users to manipulate that data with built-in CRUD components. It's the fastest way to build and deploy an amazing web app. 
Okay, so there's that, and then... Um, yeah, Discord would be fine. So, let me just... Where did I... Oh, I guess it was my main account. Okay, so this guy... Okay, yeah, Discord. Um, I don't know if people are going to be able to hear you. Um, maybe I can change my sound device. Um, I think if I change this, and change this. Can you still hear me? Um, can you hear me? Yes, okay. And then I'm gonna try to play uh, like a song, I guess. And then we'll see if, it, if you can hear it. Can you hear that? Anything? No. Okay. Well, I don't know. People, I guess people won't be able to hear you, but uh, I guess that's maybe okay. I just don't know how to do it. Okay, I'm calling you. Hey, Salvin. Yes. How's it going? Hello? Oh, you can't. Oh, no. Um, I think it's because I changed my sound device. Yeah. I'll just change it back. Okay. Maybe this is better? Can you hear me now? Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, didn't work. The device. Okay. How about now? No? Uh, hello? Nope. Okay. okay now you. you do? You hear me? Oh, perfect. Okay. Nice. Um, how, how are you doing? Yeah? Yeah. You, you were switching from, was it Python? Oh, such a... Wow, that's crazy. I mean, that's intense. Did you know JavaScript? Oh, geez. Wow. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm doing anything that complicated. I haven't even gotten into TypeScript at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So it's fun so far? Oh, nice. That's awesome. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Um, mm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's great. Yeah, not getting sick is definitely good. <laughs> um, do they let you work from home at all?
Mm-hmm. Uh, that's nice. Okay. Cool. Um, so, yeah, so basically uh, Remake has been suffering under the, like, confusion of not knowing, <laughs> not knowing what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like by using only HTML for this specific one, mm-hmm. it's like an add-on. It's not like it's yeah. the primary thing. It's like it doesn't take the whole thread away from the main thing. Right, right. So you're like, okay, well, the main thing that you want to know is if you can create a full web app, <clears throat> what is that really what you want? Or do you want to just use like a cool thing that's only HTML and put that in the main thing? Right, yeah. Yeah. No, I, well, I wish they could hear you, actually, um, but I don't, I mean, if you can't hear me on the stream, if you can't hear you on the stream, then I think you're safe. Oh, I think it's, I think it's fine. I just, I wish that it wasn't, it's just always awful to just hear one side of a conversation, so I'm a little worried that it's not the best stream content. Um, Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, okay, so Sullivan was just pointing out that um, having this at the end, uh, it kind of it makes it seem like a side feature to have like using only HTML. So we want to put that more towards the beginning. Um, that makes sense. And also that this headline really captures people's attention because it like captures the real value that I'm trying to like get across with Remake. Hmm. Right, right, yeah, yeah, so I can say using only HTML and then like these extra things to kind of like back it up, like build a full web app or add card functionality. Um, so I did get this feedback from uh, someone I talked to the other day and his advice was this, and I was wondering what you thought about this. Um, make a fully interactive web app using only HTML. So it's like really in the primary like headline. And then user accounts and crud out of the box, easily integrates with your existing code. That's not exactly true. <laughs> and then host yourself or deploy on our cloud with one command, open source. Um, so we could maybe take out the, yeah, we could take out the easily integrates because it doesn't really, I mean, it. You can integrate it with your code because it's all just Node, but it's not meant to. It's not like built for it. Um, but I don't know. I guess like, what do you think about this as a headline compared to, it's like if we just open up this image and then we just like, we zoom in a little bit and just compare it to this. Make a fully interactive web app using only HTML. That sounds kind of compelling, right? Yeah, using on, using only HTML, make a fully, yeah, so switch this to the top. Um, you don't feel like this is kind of like leading up to the punch and then it's like, boom, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. It's funny how that's like kind of become the main selling point when I didn't really want it to become the main selling point as I was building this framework. Like, I love that you can do so many things in HTML, but the idea was that like, or the original idea was that like you could do a bunch of stuff in HTML, but then you could also build your own stuff on top of that. But now it's kind of like, well, might as well go all in, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah. Right, right. Right, yeah, yeah. Just to like 
have an, an extra section um, that can teach you how to do that, how to customize it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Google had a framework at some point where you could make web components and then like they, um, I'm just trying to repeat what you just said, but like that they would just, um, they would like work out of the box, but then you could also like replace pieces or parts of them with your own code. So what do you, I mean, I guess the thing I do like about this headline is that it makes it very clear what this is while also talking about the value, right? Because like making a fully interactive web app is not something that um, takes a short amount of time normally, right? I guess the downside of this is that um, it really doesn't make clear the quality of the product, right? Whereas if I'm saying this, I'm implying that the product is going to be pretty good, right? Because I'm, I'm leading with that. Whereas here, it's, yeah. Make, uh, oh, this one, yep. Yep, sorry. Mm. So Solon's idea is that we say like make a and then there's a blank space and then we can switch this out with a bunch of different things and then I could say using only HTML. Um, and I am not sure about that. So the thing, the argument I've heard against that that really resonates with me is that you're cycling through um, 10 different messages and one of those messages is the right message. And so like instead of just choosing that message, you're making people kind of like basically have a chance to see the right message. Um, and instead, so like, yeah, or like making them wait around <laughs> to like, to like see, you know, like if, if it actually supports their use case. Whereas I think, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess right now, so the question was, is this for seasoned developers or for um, designers who just want to play around? And I think it's, or, or beginners, yeah. And I think um, that right now it has to be for pretty experienced developers, just because a lot of beginners aren't going to understand a lot of the concepts or like NPM, you know, or like, you know, how to like deploy using the command line. Like I talked to some people who like knew HTML and CSS, they were in my target market and they were just like, oh yeah, I just don't use command line tools. Um, and so I'm a little like, I, I want to uh, track that market long term. Um, and like, I would love to have like a, an online interface where you can just like edit an HTML file and then click publish. But right now the, the flow is such that that's not the ideal market. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's like pretty experienced developers, people who at least know like what, uh, to, like know the command line a little bit, know HTML a little bit. Maybe they, they're not like super experienced JavaScript developers, but um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's like really the main use case is like, 
like I like the reason I built this is because I built three different products over four years and like none of them gained traction as much as I wanted them to. And I just wish that I had like released earlier and like gotten feedback earlier and just like kind of built up momentum around it instead of like kind of expecting like one big launch to like, you know, really make it right. But I wanted to get the, the products to actually like work how I thought they should work. Um, but if I had something like Remake back then, I could have done that within, you know, like a, probably like a month or two instead of like the year and a half that it took me. Because um, all I would have had to do was like design something, build the HTML and CSS for that. And then like Remake pretty much takes care of everything else as far as interactivity goes. Like, I just have to, like, define the data structure and then it's set. Um, so I, I think that's the, like, benefit. But I think part of the problem with, con like, telling, saying that that's the benefit is that you're, I think it misses out on, like, it misses for a lot of people how it's going to work, right? Like, I think it's, like, either I can tell them that they can ship a product in, you know, a few days or a few weeks and focus on that as the benefit or I tell, or I explain that like Remake's able to convert HTML into a language for building web apps and like go more into that, right? And I feel like that might be the direction I want to head in, just because of the whole developer audience. Yeah. 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 Um. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So something along these lines. Um, Google? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. So Sullivan's talking about A-B testing, and I'm not sure I have enough of an audience to like make it significantly, like have enough significance. Like I think I get a few hundred people a month. Yeah. Hey, Surly Dove, welcome to the chat. Um, I'm talking with someone on the, on the, on, uh, Discord who you can't hear, so I'm trying to repeat back a lot of what, um, she's saying. Uh, ideally you should be able to, uh, yeah, you, ideally you should be able to hear it, but I can't, yeah, maybe I can try to get it to work. Um, let's see, so... I believe it's input needs to be this. I th think this maybe works. Can you try talking? Did that work? It's weird though, because it says the input is here. Okay. Oh, you're not hearing me either. Okay. Let's switch back. Okay, so maybe... Oh, maybe it's... <laughs> maybe it's this one. Let's try this. <laughs> um, well, I... So... Yeah, that's true. That might be... That might be part of it. Um, okay, so... 
But I think it's mostly that I think you're supposed to. When I speak, you're supposed to be speaking in sort of an audible way, like I'm in the room. Wait, look, wait, talk again? Oh, I don't. I thought it did for a second. Oh, wait, is, is it this one? Here, try it again. No. Shame. Oh. Well, yeah, we could just add a room on Discord <laughs> and have it there. Um, I think that's a good idea. We could do that and just Yeah. Until I get this figured out, I really, I kind of, I thought that, oh, wait, maybe this is the, no. I just tried that, didn't I? I, I think Soundflower is supposed to, Soundflower is supposed to handle it, but I guess it doesn't. I think there's something, here, let me, let me search for it real quick. So Soundflower, um, uh, OBS. Okay, install. Click the little magnifying audio MIDI setup, multi-output device. I did that. Oh. Okay. So I want to change this input to aggregate device soundflower. Okay. And then I think, and then this. So can you try testing again? Sullivan? No, that didn't work. Maybe this? Let me try again. I guess I could, oh, do, I could also do, I could also do music. Selena Gomez. Well, actually, I probably shouldn't do copyrighted music on the stream. Um, stream friendly music. There we go. No, but it'll just like mute the video for people later. Okay, so hmm. audio hijack. Is this Windows only? No. Oh. I creates a a sound device, so Soundflare creates a sound device that's supposed to merge two different sound devices into one. Okay, let's try it. It's gonna take two minutes, I guess. Okay, let's see, OBS, Mac, multiple, Audio. What, sorry? After what? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, maybe I can do that, right? Audio in audio input maybe, and then, I don't know what I would, device, I don't know what to select here, I'm not sure. I 
Okay. It's possible I might just need to like restart OBS in order to get this to work. Okay. Um, okay, so let's try this. This, this says that this is all it's gonna require. I show you audio capture and then switch here. Okay, maybe try testing again. Oh, but uh, my desktop audio should still be should be captured. I'm gonna st stop the stream. I'll be right back. <laughs> 